Hello, welcome to this issue of the Gym Informer Podcast. I am Chris Gilbert, your host for this episode. This t- Today, our guest is Scott Festino. He is the owner of General Fitness up in Massachusetts. It is a really huge, awesome gym. Um, I was kind of blown away by the size and the massive amount of equipment they had there. So before we get started talking to Scott, let's take a pause and I'll show you a bunch of the photos that I took while I was there working out at Scott's gym. Scott, so as we get started, um, could you give us a little background about how you got started with General Fitness and how you became the owner of this gym? Certainly will. Uh, back in 1999, well, I'll go prior to that. I was actually a barber up in Middletown, and uh, starting at the age of 16 years old, I started at General Fitness working out, got friendly with the owners. Um, they ended up taking me on, asking me to come in and run the business for them. Um, that was in 1999. I actually caught here for 17 years prior to, to being a gym manager. In 2020, right before COVID, I had the opportunity to take it over for myself. And um, here we are. Awesome. Yeah, it's um, it's a pretty impressive facility. I can't imagine it. It's probably a pretty – it was a fun place to work out. I imagine it's probably a pretty fun place to run. Yeah, definitely. Um one of the things that, that really impressed me, besides just the pure size of it, how many square feet do you guys have? Oh, we're over 50,000 square feet. Yeah, it's one of the biggest gyms I've been to. Um, was the um, variety of equipment that you have. You have a really big variety and a really cool mix of old school equipment and new school equipment. Um, how do you decide like what is going to go on the floor? Well, different trade shows I've been to and you know visiting other gyms. Uh, seeing equipment that I personally like myself to use. And also I rely on, on some of my members if they visit another club and they find them a piece of equipment they like, you know, it, it's all about them. So what they like is what I get. That's awesome. Yeah. I was just, I walked in and I'm like, wow. Like, and everything is so well organized. Like it's obvious that this is the back area and this is the arm area. Did you always set up to organize it that way? Was it organized that way when you took it over or did you have to reorganize everything? Um, I, I pretty much reorganized the majority of the gym. It was it was somewhat set up in the same fashion according to body part. But when I came on as manager back in '99, is when I kind of reorganized things and and put things where I thought they belonged. Yeah, it was it was really well organized. It's, I love going into a gym that's organized by body part, and you don't see you guys. I would still classify you guys as a fitness center, even though it feels like an old school bodybuilding gym, just because you have so many things that you offer. It's not. Mm-hmm just strictly a bodybuilding gym which is really cool um but you don't often see fitness centers that are organized so well most of the time fitness centers are like okay here's your stack loaded or pin loaded equipment here's your plate loaded equipment over there's your free weight area um so it was awesome that you had so much to offer and still had a really good organization um and the atmosphere was really cool i mean not only was it it feel it felt like an old school bodybuilding gym, but the members obviously loved working out there. I talked to several of them. They obviously really care about the gym. Is that something that you feel like you've been able to like incorporate in the gym, have something to do with? Did it just kind of come about organically? It, it kind of came about organically. I, I again, I've been here since 19, 1999. and you become friendly with these people. They're they're extended family. You spend more time at the gym than you do at home. And, um, you know, it just, it's kind of like the precedent you said, it's a, it's a no BS gym. Um, we don't tolerate anybody acting up and, and all the members kind of like fall in place. I, I think I've had two problems since 1999. So it's a great place. I'm, I'm very proud of the environment that's here and the, and the members that we have as, as part of our fitness family. It's, it's just it's a great place. Everybody gets along really well here and they're very helpful. Yeah. yeah I probably talked to, to six or eight people while I was there and everyone spoke very highly of the gym and um, everyone knew who you were. Like you happen to be like out of town the day I was there and like the members knew you were out of town, which is 
kind of impressive that not only do they know who you are, but they know that like you're just not, you know, they know like, oh, Scott's not in. He's like traveling or, you know. So I always find that anytime that I'm in a gym and they know who the owner is and the owners are very present, that it tends to be a better gym. It's a personal connection you have with people. Uh, at, at your box gyms, you're not going to get that. There's no uh, no skin in, as they say. You know, I've got skin in a place, and my son now is taking over at general manager, and he's he's a replica of me, and he's no one by first name. And I feel it's really important, and you're really not going to get that at your uh, your box or or commercial type gyms. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. That's that's kind of like why I started like going to locally owned gyms, which is for that connection and that that family feel. Um, as you mentioned, you've got a 50,000 square foot gym. Now you've owned it or you've run it for 20 years, owned it for almost five. Um, it, what's the, what's the future of general fitness is, is this, are you happy with where it is? Is there growth is uh, just new equipment or where, where's it going? Yeah. You're never happy where it is. Yeah. We always try to improve on our equipment. Um, what we offer, you know, the different you know, now we're getting into power racks and power lifting. So if you see the need, you do it and kind of go in that direction. As far as expanding, yeah, I'd love to. We always have, you know, I'm always looking or thinking about something different. So, yeah, I, I, I hope for expansion in the future, especially with my son. I can kind of split myself another piece, I guess, and, and not worry about, you know, this place so much. Yeah. So so when you talk about expansion, you're talking about there could potentially be a, a second general fitness or you just be like, 75,000 square feet instead of 50,000 square feet. We won't be any larger here. We're the we're biggest we need to be. But help me, maybe another location in the future. We'll see. Okay, awesome. Right. Yeah, I'd love to see that. It's I can't imagine the gym being any bigger. I was, I was no. kind of, <laughs> it's, no. it's okay. so huge now. Yeah, it's big enough. Yeah, so, I'm sorry? You have to put a lot of equipment on, you know, with this many square footage. Oh, That's yeah, you guys, you guys had it. Had it well equipped and but still nicely spread out. Like you go to some gyms and it's it's so busy you can't you can't move around. It's so packed in. I mean, obviously with fifty thousand square feet, it's probably easy to spread it out a little bit. But we have over three hundred and fifty equipment on the floor right now. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah, thank um, you. So one of the things we like to talk to ask gym owners um, as we're before we finish is like, either do you have any advice? Or is there a piece of advice that you'd want to give to somebody who's thinking about owning a gym or somebody that's wanting to get into the gym ownership business or running a gym since you've been a manager and been an owner? Yes, absolutely. Listen to your clientele. It's their gym, really. So it's all about people pleasing, making sure they, they get what they need, um, treating your staff well. Without your staff, you're really nothing. So again, treat your staff well. Listen to your members. Keep a clean gym and uh, have passion for the business. Oh yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. Um it's it's such a such a cool it's such a cool environment you guys have up there. Um I love being in Massachusetts and in that New England area. There's so many of the the old like mills and warehouses and factories that got turned into gyms. I'm assuming that's what yours used to be a, a mill or a factory or it was a factory. Yeah, it was a factory okay. one time. They made hats and and clothing items and, and material cloth. So it's a, I think the building is 1876, 1877. Oh, wow. So it's, it's an old building. It's yeah. Most of the gyms I went up there, went, went to, I was up there were in like old brick or stone buildings, which just give it a really cool vibe. Right. We make good use of unusable space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully they're... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, there's a lot of good gyms in this area. You know, I'm, oh, I'm not commercial gyms. You know, you're, I have a lot of respect for the people up at Impact. That's a great gym also. So yeah, there's, there's others like us in the area. It's a, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I went to Impact while I was there. It's, it was a cool gym. Yeah, it's a good gym, definitely. Yeah, there was there was probably, I probably hit a half a dozen gyms in Massachusetts, and they were all super cool. So it's a good, well, have, a good area to work out in. So I, I appreciate you coming on and – um and, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing what, what the future holds for general fitness and for you. And um, it seems like exciting. And if you guys decide to open another location, please let me know. I'd love to get back up there and check it out. And you're always welcome here, Chris. And I wish you luck with your brand. You're doing a great right, thing. You. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Have a great day. 
If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great content.